Well, hey, everybody, and welcome back to group week three of I Want a New Family. And I'm guessing if you heard last weekend's teaching and maybe even were in your group for that discussion, it probably raised a lot of further questions or certainly good conversation. I'm guessing it also raised a lot of next steps that you are taking or are debating on whether or not you will take. And that week in particular had something that could certainly be applicable for every single one of us, regardless of what kind of family we are part of. And so as we begin this week, I just want to encourage you to stick with it. Uh, keep doing the work. Keep taking the next steps towards healing and wholeness, because a better version of you is a better version for everyone around you. So here's the question that we're asking this week. Do I have a picture in mind today of the family I hope to have in the future? Now, here in week number three, we're focusing on the end or the goal, or we might say the picture that we have in mind for our family. Because when we have the destination clear, we can choose the best route and even, believe it or not, enjoy the journey at times. This week, the hard work doesn't really let up if you choose to do it. Because what we're challenging ourselves with when we think about our family or our home is to begin with the end in mind. In other words, do you have a picture of what you want your family to turn out looking like? Uh, the values, the celebrations, the rhythms, the way you live with each other. And we mean in a year or five years, 10, maybe even 20 years down the road or go all the way to the end, however that works, and what do you hope it will be like for your home? What are the foundational truths you will build on? And much like we did last week where we took a scripture, we studied it, and then we made a very specific application for family, it's a little like that this week. Because you're going to read this in your group together, the very end or the conclusion of Jesus' most famous teaching that we know of as the Sermon on the Mount. You can read it at the end of Matthew chapter 7, but it's Jesus' version of essentially putting two deals on the table for you. Here's two ways that you could actually build your life, and for our purposes, how you would build a home. You'd likely know these. He said you can build on a solid foundation like rock that can stand up under anything, or you can build on sand that's unstable and shifting that will eventually cause your house to fall. And not to steal the punchline because it's really so simple and basic, but Jesus says that if you hear his words and then you do them, that's what builds a solid home. It's the person who maybe hears his words, maybe even agrees with them or nods their head and says, you know, that seems like it might be better, but they don't actually do anything with them. And Jesus says that's how you end up with a house that falls. Simply put, Without a clear picture of the house you want to build, you will likely settle for what's easy and convenient. I mean, it's highly likely that we will allow plenty of other things to give us direction. If we don't determine the picture we want and move towards it, then life and culture and the world around us will determine that for us. So when you think about the picture of the home that you want, is it being built on the foundation of Jesus? I mean, his words and truth. What he says is a better way to live. And are you taking steps to actually do those things? Now, how you apply all that to your family is largely up, up to you. Uh, but here are the questions that we asked at the end of the message. And here is where the hard work begins if you're making your decision to build on solid ground. Here are some of the questions. Uh, when you think about the picture you have in mind, okay, if you had that, how might things be different for you or your family or the people in your home? And then a follow-up question would be, what's actually standing in the way of having that? And then the action comes in where we ask, what can you actually do today to start seeing that picture come into focus? There's a very famous moment in the life of the nation of Israel after they've crossed the Jordan and settled in the promised land and Joshua, who is the leader, he's reminding people that how they choose to build, 
okay, what they choose to stand for, the picture that they have in mind for their home is everything. And then he says these very famous words. He says, as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. It's very short. It's very focused, very intentional. So maybe as we wrap things up, and how you think through all of this and, and you discuss it, uh, maybe you could just fill in the blank by saying, as for me and my home, we will, and you fill in the blank. I think it's going to be an amazing discussion. I'm super excited that many of us can give some intentional thought to what we want our homes to 